Hey everybody, Dan Lucas from Credo here, and I am here for day six of the 50 states in 50 days. And today we're doing the sixth state, and that would be Massachusetts. And so Massachusetts was admitted to the Union on February 6, 1788. So almost a full month after Connecticut was admitted. Um, I don't know why it, it kind of slowed down after a while. It seemed like they were really going fast with admitting these states to the union and then all of a sudden it kind of slowed down. So I'm not sure if anybody knows, please put that in the comments below. I'd be kind of curious to know why they kind of slowed down as kind of time went on as far as admitting states to the union. Um, so anyway, we're going to do Massachusetts. Of course, you know, Boston's there. So a lot of, lot of business activity in, uh, in Mass. And uh, by the time we get done with all the tax credits on this, you should be wicked smart. I know, big dork, right? I'll get to the good stuff. Hold on. Uh, okay. So first, uh, first credit I'm going to talk about is the conservation and land tax credit. And uh, you know, conservation credits, land credits is no uh, nothing new. Um, again. Federal credits are big, widely used with land conservation. Uh, not a lot of states necessarily have it where you can double dip on. So Massachusetts does. So if you like double dipping on conservation, um, you want to learn a little bit more about that in Massachusetts. Next one would be the Economic Development Incentive Program credit. And I guess that's called the EDIPC. They're commonly referred to as that. And that's a tax incentive to create and just stimulate business in Massachusetts. So this credit, I think, is very broad and has a lot, a uh, lot to do with it. But if you're a business or growing business in Massachusetts, I would just review it. Um, I'm not going to tell you that you can get this or, or can't get it because uh, it's kind of broad. And so, if I was you, I would just look at it. again. That's the EDIPC incentive program credit. Next one is the economic opportunity area credit. Um, don't think this is you know different to similar types of credits that we've talked about as far as you know uh, different areas that they're trying to boost up um, as far as just economic prosperity so you know if you're doing projects in those types of areas look at the map Massachusetts has a map of these different areas look at the map and see if you're doing anything in those areas you might qualify for credit there's the employer wellness program credit which I guess is commonly referred to as the EWPC. And that's a credit for employers that implement a certified wellness program for its employees. What is a certified wellness program? Well, you're gonna have to dig a little bit to find out on that. Uh, it's probably a little bit beyond the scope of this video. But if you're providing um, any sort of wellness program in your business, I, I don't see this credit like all over the place. Um, and so it's, unique to, to Massachusetts. Um, well, maybe not just Massachusetts, but it, it is a unique credit. So I don't see this a lot of places. So obviously it's a good thing. I mean, they're trying to uh, promote, you know, wellness uh, for people. So if you're doing anything in that area, look at it. And a lot of times some of these credits that are for wellness, um, you know, th these things that are more about people, right, helping people, and that they can be a little bit more liberal and a little bit more, uh, loose as far as getting those credits and they're kind of generous with them so you know if you think that you're doing something in your business to improve wellness of your people look at it because um, it might be a pretty easy credit to get next one is the film incentive tax credit and you know these are all over the country um, and it's not a federal credit but it's a state credit and they can be really valuable I mean uh, again so they have a film credit for motion pictures that are created in Massachusetts, just like anything else. Of course, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in Boston, I'm sure. And uh, I didn't say that right, it's Boston, right? Uh, okay, the historic rehabilitation tax credit. Again, we just talked about this with like Connecticut, and you're gonna see a lot of this kind of stuff going on, like just the 13 colonies and stuff, or the original 13 colonies, is to rehabilitate historic structures, landmarks, et cetera, et cetera. If you've done anything in that area, or if, you, if you've invested in anything in that area or in real estate partnerships in that area, make sure they're getting these credits. Or make sure that you're not supposed to be getting these credits on your own personal return as you get that flow through from the partnership. 
Okay, look into that if you think you're invested in it. Again, some of this stuff doesn't take but just a few minutes to look into. So I'm just trying to I'm just trying to prompt you to dig a little deeper or even ask us questions uh, in the comment section below, so that we can help to find out pretty quickly whether or not it's something for you to keep pursuing. All right, we have the low income housing tax credit, commonly referred to as LIHTC. And it's available to individual taxpayers, partnerships, and corporations that invest in qualified low-income housing projects in Massachusetts. So something in that area rings a bell, something you want to look into. Um, those are not necessarily uh, totally common, but they're not uncommon either. Okay, And they used to have, I think a lot more states used to have a lot more generous programs in that area. And after the Opportunity Zones started to become more popular, they pulled back a little bit on it. But... Anyway, um, that's something that you know you should look into if you're in that area. Uh, research credit, so the R&D credit. When we talked about the R&D credit before, um, again, this is can be a very lucrative credit, and it's both federal and if you're in Massachusetts, it's federal and state, so you can double dip on it. Um, biggest problem with this credit is that I see a lot of people not thinking they qualify for it, and they do because they have some idea of what research and development is. And it's not, uh, I mean, it's not wrong what they think, but they don't understand that the tax code actually has a much broader interpretation of what it is. So if you're in a business where you're investing in the future and you're doing things to get better and, and you know, bringing people on, uh, maybe hiring consultants, things like that, to help with your systems and um, your, you know, your product development, things like that, take a look at it because these are huge credits and it's not something you want to miss. Okay, and then Massachusetts has some other credits that I'm going to put in kind of like a second category that are a little more kind of just niche or, uh, you know, sort of not mainstream or not, not commonly understood. One would be the Brownsfield, Brown, sorry, Brownfield tax credit, commonly referred to as BTC. It's not Bitcoin. It's the Brownfields tax credit, and uh, that is for like cleaning up contaminated property. So it's like an environmental tax credit. There's the Certified Housing Development Tax Credit, which is CHDC. That's how it's referred to, and that is for investing in housing development projects in Massachusetts. Um, I'm not sure how that would go with the credit we talked about earlier, the Low Income Housing Tax Credit necessarily be happy to do some research for somebody if they wanted to learn more about it if they thought they had it and work with them on it but i'm not sure if those are piggybacked or how those are different different or similar if somebody does please put it in the comments um, because we're just trying to share as much information as we can here with each other um there is the let's see the community investment tax credit which is citc and that's a refundable tax credit for taxpayers and businesses that make cash contributions to investment projects what does refundable tax credit mean? It means even if you don't pay tax, you can still get some money, right? So even if you don't pay any tax into Massachusetts, you can still get some money refunded to you, okay? So that's pretty cool. So that might be something to look at too. Um, of course, if you think you qualify for it. They have the dairy farmer tax credit. Definitely don't see this one as, as a common credit. Um, and all it says on their site is learn about a tax credit available to Massachusetts dairy farmers. If you're a dairy farmer, my advice would be look into it. If you're not, ignore it. Uh, they have the farming and fisheries tax credit, um, which totally makes sense for that state. Um, and you can get a personal income tax credit as an individual uh, if you're engaged in agricultural, agriculture, farming, or commercial fishing. So, you know, if you're a dairy farmer, you might be able to double dip on this. Um, but if you're in the fishing business, uh, farming, any type of agriculture, anything like that, something you want to look at. And and it's a personal credit too, so I don't think you have to be a business necessarily. You probably just have to be a, like a 1099 um, or, yeah, just kind of like a self-employed or, or kind of a one-man operation or a woman. All right, we have the Harbor Maintenance Tax Credit, referred to as HMT. Uh, and this, this is a credit for taxpayers who paid the federal harbor maintenance tax. doesn't say anything about how you get a credit on that, but if you're paying that Federal Harbor maintenance tax, you're going to want to look at this. The and they have one that's just called the investment tax credit, and it says you can earn the credit for the purchase or lease of qualifying tangible property. Learn if you qualify. 
I think that that is more about um, like fixed assets. Um, so, you know, if you're like, like a, um, a lot of times these are double dips too. I mean, the, the, you can get uh, federal tax credits for machinery and equipment, things like that. But it looks like Massachusetts already gives you another one. So if you're investing in machinery, fixed assets, vehicles, things like that, uh, look into the investment tax credit would be my advice. Okay, another one is called the Life Sciences Tax Credit. And it says that there are five tax credits and incentives available to certified life science companies. So if you're a life science company, it's something you want to dig into. Again, we're based on request basis, we're happy to uh, uh, help dig into that a little bit. Um, we got two more. We got the medical device credit. And so you can get, let's see, it says you can get a medical device credit that is equal to 100% of the user fees paid. So I'm assuming that's for uh, individuals that have had to buy a medical device and 100% of the user fees paid would mean that, you know, if you pay $1,000 for something, you can get a $1,000 tax credit for that. So if you have a medical device or buy a you know, pacemaker, you know, anything like that, I would look into that to see if that's a credit you're missing. And then the last one is the Van Pool credit. And it just says it's a credit available if you have incurred expenses related to your vehicle in, in a business. Uh, I think small business too. So even if it's a single member LLC, um, I think you would still be eligible for this. But again, you know, we take requests. So if that's something you want us to dig into, we will. Um, purpose of this is just to get these out there and get you thinking to see if you think there's something you might be missing. Uh, because again, the big, the big problem is that most people just don't know about these at all, um, especially on the state level. They kind of stay uh, stay more hidden, but they can be quite valuable. And you know, you can put tens of thousands of dollars back in your pocket um, just by having a little bit of knowledge and uh, uh, a little bit of know-how. So. Um, that's it for Massachusetts. I apologize for all the bad jokes and the pathetic attempts at a Boston accent. Um, but uh, I don't know. Um, you know, uh, it's a great state. I've been there a lot of times. Uh, I used to go there in the fall uh, before I had a lot of kids and stuff. And <laughs> we had four. I have four boys now. But before I had kids, we used to go to Salem in the in the fall, uh, Salem, Massachusetts, and just the, the Halloween festivals and all the fun stuff there. It was really awesome. It's just a really, really beautiful state. Um, lots to do up there. Beautiful state. A lot of the coastal thing. Cape Cod is beautiful. Boston's an awesome city. A lot of history. Um, so highly recommend you uh, take a look at that. But I'm not advertising for travel. So those are the tax credits for Massachusetts. And um, I look forward to sending out the video tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to talk about Maryland. Okay, that was the seventh state admitted to the union. So until then, have a good night and thank you very much. Bye bye.